Okay, so you have received a copy of the outline, but you are actually not going to be writing your outline. You are going to be typing this on a Google Doc. Why do I have those straight lines? Yes, that I did myself. I had done one, ran it through the photocopier, and it was too light to see, so I've kind of been trying to redo them. What, what does that straight line indicate for your outline? This is kind of a throwback. Where your sentence inserts on, but no curvy lines. There should be, it should be a complete, when you turn in the final draft of your outline this week, your points should be lined up perfectly just like this. And again, the good news is that your outline is actually made pretty easy because you have those three sections. Who and what influenced the audience? What did my author write? What are the literary criticisms of my author's writing? And then finally, who and what impacted? Or who, or uh, excuse me, let me rephrase that. What was the impact of my author then in the time period that he or she was writing and now, 2018, on the American landscape? Okay, that's what our outline is all about. Yes? How many pages does this have to be? The outline, great question, is one page. No, I'm saying like the whole. Like, the whole research paper? We'll worry, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Outline focus today. Okay, now. We are going to do a full sentence outline. In the past, Alex, there's a reason why. You can do a phrases or clauses outline where you just have shortened, but even my honor students have struggled with maintaining that same structure and to make it simple so that, because I take off a point for everything that you're off on your outline. So to make it easier, we're going to do full sentences. And we're going to kind of use this to start writing what are our full sentences going to look like. And then tomorrow, again, because we're a little short on time today, yeah, we're short on time today, we're going to, that's why the outline is kind of over a couple days. Tomorrow we start typing the outline. So I'm going to pull this up. Josie, can you erase that for me, please? And Nick, can you get that controller? And let's go ahead and turn off the projector. And let's kind of start writing out what is what are the sentences that I'm going to use on my outline. I think if you point it. Yep, go ahead and erase all that. You still need this. What? You still need this? No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's kind of hard with the blue. All right, not on video. Good. Okay. So, and it's going to be kind of very similar with your outline. Do you type anything for your introduction? Nope. Nope. It is exactly going to be Roman numeral one, introduction, and then we're going to skip a line and we're going to go into Roman numeral two. Okay? So, what is the second section? of my research paper about? How do I turn that into a complete sentence? Add more words. <laughs> How do I turn that into a complete sentence? Don't you have to have a verb and a noun? A verb and a noun. Stop, Jenna. Jenna? Did you say author's name wasn't really long? It would longer. So let's kind of start with the influences on, okay, and you're going to just write your author's name. Yes, we're going to write these full sentences, yes. Have a pen or pencil and like write that. I'm actually giving you kind of your, we're going to kind of do some of this together. So this will make this a little easier. The influence is on, you know, again, I use this author a lot. This is Faith Sort of Let. Kate Chopin's life 
and writing. Okay? We're going to use full sentence, the influences on Kate Chopin's life and writing. This is a kind of a rough draft. And actually, we're going to add, you can just write this above, the different influences on your author's name, life, and writing. Because you are kind of addressing, you know, if the author's parents divorced, if the author lost a sibling, if the author moved around a lot, if the author was a misfit, was an outcast if the author experienced a lot of tragedies, okay? So, the different influences on your author's name, life, and writing. And then if you look at, after two, you have an A. Subtitle. Okay, you have a one, you have a two. What is this A? going to be addressing. Okay, so A is going to be addressing a specific influence. This is why I wanted to have all of your note cards back. So part of completing this outline is going to be kind of looking back through your note cards and kind of refreshing your memory, especially over this first section. If my author was definitely influenced by situations or experiences that happened to her growing up, then that's probably that's her early life, okay? And that's what I want to talk about first. So again, I've got to turn that into a complete sentence. It's going to be a lot easier if we write this in complete sentences. So let's say, again, this is hypothetical about... This author, if I know that I want to address, then I want to write a complete sentence that hints at one of the first influences. And I know after looking back over family, over my note cards, that her family had a big impact on her growing up. Or it might be the time period. You know, when we read Arthur Miller in The Crucible, we really didn't read much about, a little bit about his parents, his upbringing, but definitely I would say the time period was a big influence. It depends on the information that's in your note cards, and then I've got to turn that into a complete sentence. Kate Chopin, again, so I'm going to start with my author's name, kind of the easiest way, add a difficult childhood. Uh, these don't have to be really long, complex sentences. I just want to talk about, again, like Tommy said, what influenced my author growing up? What influenced my author's writing? What is the one and the two? Now that I have the A, this is her first influence. And Faye sort of let down, this, I just kind of, yeah, this is not factual because I haven't, I can't remember all my research. I know this, keep this, but you've got to go back over your sources. So this is just a hypothetical. If she had a difficult childhood, then what is my one and two, Connor? Facts that support your statement. Facts that support A. What is my evidence? That's what these, the one and the two. What is the evidence? And I would make, you know, these little notes. What is the evidence supporting the fact that A was an influence? Whatever your A is. For some of you, there is no doubt you are going to have your author had a difficult childhood. But not all of your authors had a difficult childhood. For some of you, it may be a different A. 
And then you've got to think about, okay, so what am I going to talk about in detail for one and two? Because if, if I have one, I got to have a two. And you, so this is, again, this is the format you're going to follow. So it may be, and again, Faith sort of let making this up. Okay. Yeah, no, we can only find one fact that supports your You have to have, a, if you have a one, the outline rule is you have to have a two. Okay. If you have an A, you have to have a B. And it may be, that's just the outline rule, an A and a B, a one and a two. At least two points. Because I've got to flush out what are the influences, the different influences on my author's life and writing. So if I, my evidence, her mother died when she was a little girl. Okay, and again, this is from, coming from my note cards. Her family moved around a lot. Okay, so these are my two pieces of evidence that support she had a difficult childhood. Can I have a three and a four. Yes. Yes. Because oh, for some oh. of you, you are going to have more than just a one and a two. You could have a three and a four. We got five. You probably want to kind of stop at Darn. four. Okay. Yes. So is it Peters to the main office.